In this video, I played 100 games of Bloons Tower Defense 6. Intros are pointless, just start the video. For game 1, I decided to start on the map In The Loop. It's a good beginner map to warm up on, and it's one I haven't made too much progress on yet. I did primary only, as I decided I was going to start on easier difficulties and then work my way up to chimps. There aren't too many strategies for primary only, I just went with a dart monkey, boomerang monkey, bomb tower, and tack shooter, and I absolutely crushed it. On game 2, I decided to do deflation. I had a kind of weird strategy where I did a 4-2-0 spike tower uh, and a bomb shooter for Moabs and BFBs. Although I did realize that it wasn't a good idea to put Gwendolyn and my bomb tower at the start, as it would give more time for regrow balloons to regrow. Things did start to get dicey at a few points, but I held out until round 60 and defeated the BFB. On game 3, I did military only. The start was a little rough, and I almost forgot to get camo protection, but after a while, things smoothed out, and I was significantly overpowered, and I just ate up that BFB no problem. For game 4, I decided to do Apocalypse, which is one of my favorite game modes. Basically, it's normal balloons, but the rounds start automatically, and they rapidly increase in difficulty. I started with two submarine monkeys, and then a dart monkey, who I upgraded to have a crossbow. I did end up bleeding a few lives at one point, but nothing that got past my mana shield. Although, uh, not long after, things started to get dire, as they tend to do in this game mode. And then I decided to place a spike factory with the same upgrades as the one I had in game 2. Once again, that helped them off for a while, but as the game progressed, things got worse, and I lost 150 lives. And later on, I got an upgraded dart monkey with Crossbow Master, which carried me to around 60, and this time I decided to keep going in free play mode. I made it to around 77 before I got overwhelmed, although that doesn't count as a loss because I did finish the challenge. Game 5 was on Reverse, which is technically not just normal mode, it reverses the order that balloons come out, and it reverses the map, and I started with an Engineer Monkey. If you can get larger service area and Devil Gun, they can be pretty powerful in the early game. I also got some Druids down. As of writing this, their Druid of the Jungle attack is still overpowered. I absolutely swept. The only worry I had was camos, but a Crossbow Monkey successfully neutralized that threat. I don't have great Moab damage, though, and I had to use a Super Monkey Storm here. Although on round 44, I had Sharpshooter and Necromancer, which would be able to take most things. On round 48, I got a, bu a Monkey Buccaneer with the Monkey Pirates upgrade, which will let me take down the BFB with one click. Also, if things get risky, I could take down a Moab with it. But oops, I am too powerful, and I couldn't even hook the BFB before it was popped. Since this game had gone so well, I decided to go into free play. The rest of this game was insane. I kept upgrading my income and towers, and eventually I had absurd tower upgrades and seven cracked druids. I ended up going to round 140, where I lost to a reinforced bad, but I don't really care. That game was awesome. Game 6 was on magic only on hard mode, meaning now I have to go to round 80, and things cost more. I can also only use magic monkeys and my hero. I started with a druid, which I intended to upgrade to do druid of the jungle, and I did. Uh, and I kept getting upgrades and had a balloon jitsu ninja monkey, a shimmer wizard, and level 7 Gwendolyn. But things ended up getting pretty dicey with the Moab, and I lost about 50 lives. Although I got necromancer, which should give me some more time before I have to upgrade again. And when I had to upgrade again, I upgraded my Necromancer to a Prince of Darkness, which should be able to carry me quite far. Once again, I destroyed the BFB, but this time it didn't win me the challenge, at least not yet. And then I decided to build a small army of druids and get a Dark Knight, which defeated the Zom. Though this time I didn't go into free play, I do want to finish this video within like a year. I started game 7 with a bomb shooter. I'm on double HP Moabs now, so I'll need to upgrade it to a Moab Mauler at some point. I bled some lives in the early game, but nothing that got past my mana shield once again. Although when Moabs came, I did need a cash drop to get Moab press on my boomerang monkey, which might just have been what saved me. Anyway, I kept going and now I also have Moab Assassin for my bomb shooter and a Necromancer. I also got a village that boosts my primary towers, which make up 3 out of 5 of the towers in its radius. Also, I got a monkey town, which gives me more money, 
when I pop a balloon by with any monkey in its radius. And while it wasn't perfect, I did manage to get through round 63 all right. And that gives me hope I should be able to make it to round 80, no problem. And as anticipated, I blazed through round 76, 78, and as I had a pirate lord, round 82. In game 8, I was on impoppable, which is a bitch. Things cost even more. Mana shield is disabled, and you only have one life. And you have to beat round 100 rather than 80. I started with a dart monkey and druid, and already things weren't looking great. Although, with some upgrades, I was doing well, and ended up doing better when I got Gwendolyn and a wizard. And before round 40, I got a Moab Mauler. And after round 41, I... I got a Necromancer, which will help greatly, although I need 31k to upgrade to a Prince of Darkness, so strap in. I didn't actually change my loadout at all until round 61 when I got my Prince of Darkness, and then I absolutely fucking decimated round 63, those balloons had no chance, and I pretty much kept my loadout the same except a Spike Factory and two Banana Farms, and as expected, I also destroyed round 76 and 78, less so 80, but it still wasn't even close. Although on round 82, I underestimated these reinforced Moabs and had my first loss of the video. And on game 9, I was completely zoned out and didn't realize that it was round 40 until it was too late. On game 10, I went with a Buccaneer to start, and then kept upgrading my arsenal from there. And by round 40, I had a Moab press, which basically meant a guaranteed win for that round. And I basically kept dominating until round 70. I didn't die or anything, but I realized I'd need about 100k for my planned upgrades, so I'll have to conserve my money for now. And on round 79, I got the first of those major upgrades, the upgrade in question being Pirate Lord for my Buccaneer. Convenient timing, too, because I got it right before round 80. My next upgrade was a Necromancer on round 85. It's going to be a Prince of Darkness soon, don't worry. And by round 95, I was crushing DDTs no problem, and I beat round 100 quite easily. Let's go! Oh, by the way, the Spike Factory in the corner didn't get a single pop. It's almost funny until you realize that when I bought that, 10k would have actually been quite useful! I decided to do Chimps for game 11. Chimps differs from Impoppable in that you can't pay monkey money to continue, you can't use any monkey knowledge, you can't sell towers, you can't use Benjamin or Banana Farms, and the plus side is that prices are back to default. That's... that's... Uh. I'm basically doing the same strategy as I was in game 10. I deliberately didn't do that with Banana Farm, so I could test it would still be a viable strategy for chimps. Things were going great, but at one point I accidentally got Bionic Boomerang instead of Kylie's for my Boomerang Monkey, and now I just have to live with it. No selling. I also just have a ninja monkey off to the side now because I had to stop this stray red camo, but once again, I crushed round 40. And I crushed round 60 equally hard. You know, there's not really much to say since I've already done this, but it was technically easier the first time. Cruised into round 80, decimated, breezed through the 90s, and absolutely destroyed in round 100. Game 12, I was playing Half Cash, which is arguably the hardest game mode. It's just like hard mode, but you earn half as much income. I started with a free dart monkey I got from a knowledge perk, and then I got a not very free boomerang monkey, and a free bank, which I got for beating round 100 last time. Banks are good on half cash because while the initial earnings are halved, the interest you can earn at the end of each round is not halved. I also got two more druids that I'm going to try and max out. After getting a druid of the jungle, I cashed out from my bank and got enough to get a pirate buccaneer, and I got a second bank and easily beat round 40. And on round 54, I got a monkey town, which means I'm now earning the default amount of money on my druids, dart monkey, and boomerang monkey. On round 58, I got a necromancer because I realized I would not survive round 63 without one. Although round 60 was easy, and contrary to popular belief, round 63 went fine. I also ended it with 69-69 cash. And other than upgrading to a Prince of Darkness just before round 76, my loadout was pretty much the same until round 80, when I bought a Pirate Lord and beat half cash easily. And that is the first black border of this video. Black borders are unlocked when you beat every difficulty and challenge on a map, by the way. For game 13, I decided to do the map downstream. It's an intermediate map, and I had every metal except chimps, so I figured I'd just reuse the strategy from game 10 again. Although, I forgot that it was round 24, and I ended up leaking one green camo balloon. 
Although in game 14, my main priority was getting a crossbow monkey, so round 24 wasn't an issue. And after upgrading some monkeys, round 40 came, and despite the fact that my harpoon was on cooldown, I still destroyed the Moab. But then I got hit with some camo rainbows. I thought I had sharpshooter, and I did not. And in game 15, I was at that same point, except with a better loadout, and I dealt with the rainbows handily. But on 63, some bloons leaked. I don't know why the strategy seems so much less effective on this map. Since that strategy isn't working, I'm using a different one, although it will still have a few elements of the last one. I relies on druids, but the main similarities are that for rounds 40, 60, and 80, I'm relying on a pirate buccaneer. Also, I plan on getting a necromancer, and I also realized that Monkey Town does not work on chimps, so that was a waste of like $15,000. And by round 60, I was seriously beefing my druid army. And while it wasn't a landslide, my army did assist in beating round 63, and I had increased their numbers, and they did just as well for round 76, 76, and round 80 ended up being a bit too close for comfort as I didn't have a pirate lord yet, but I made it anyway. But on round 93, some DDTs got past my defenses, and for some reason my druids didn't take down the last few Serams. On game 17, I decided to buy and use Azili. The other two heroes I use are Benjamin and Gwendolyn, one of which is absolutely useless for chimps. I did technically have a game here where I was just testing how Azili fails, fares in the early rounds, and I lost, but it, do it was just a test, it doesn't count. This time, I placed Azealia on round 13, and as it turns out, she's not bad, just not a good starter. She also saved my ass on round 24, as I had no other camo protection. I couldn't get monkey pirates for round 40, but I could get a boomerang monkey with Moab Press, which proved just as effective. I also forgot that Monkey Town doesn't work on chimps and started upgrading a village. I can still get primary upgrades off of it, but it's not ideal. I also got a Necromancer between round 51 and 52, and by round 60, I had Monkey Pirates, so that was no issue. Although, once again, the last streak continues on round 63. I think I know what to do, though. See, I think I could have gotten past round 60 without Monkey Pirates. And with that spare money, I would have had more than enough for spiked mines. So, that's what I'm going to do on game 18. The game went almost exactly the same as the last one until round 58 when I got spiked mines from my spike factory and still dealt with that BFB. Uh, that, along with a Moab Shredder spike factory I placed previously, just allowed me to beat round 63 quite easily. And it wasn't exactly clean, but I did get through round 76 and 78. And I got a Prince of Darkness on round 79, and apparently Azili's Moab Hex ability blocked bloons from turning into other bloons. Like here, instead of turning into a bunch of BFBs, the Zom just disappeared. And my Prince of Darkness absolutely swept round 95. And with a, a mix of my Spike Factories, Azili's Moab Hex, and the Prince of Darkness, I blackboarded downstream. Game 19, I'm on the map Alpine Run, and I want to try and black border every beginner map, but I already have 4 out of 6 on this page, and it'd be cool to look at a full page of black borders. Since I'm on an easier difficulty now, I have the opportunity to be a little bit silly, so I'm taking it. I decided to go with Azili first, and now I'm going to try and get a 205 tax shooter. I should be able to get past around 60 easily, but after I have my max tax shooter and a village that will let it pop anything, I just want to see how long it will last on its own. Update on my boy on round 30. He has overdrive, which makes him a monster. He should be able to handle the Moab. And now I'm only 20k away from perfection. Although in the meantime, I did get a Moab Mauler, as I'm not 100% sure that my boy can take a Moab on his own. Although Moab Mauler or no, it turns out my boy cannot handle a Moab. So let's just clean this up. And on round 49, I sold my wizard and cannon to upgrade my boy into a man. I haven't sold Azili yet, as my boy still can't pop lead, but Azili will not last long. And then I sold Azili, purchased MIB, and now my child can fend for himself. I also bought a village with the primary mentoring upgrade, which makes him an absolute monster. And my little man-child defeated the BFE with a little uh, guidance. And I realized that he was a little less powerful than I thought, so I just ended the game there. I couldn't stand to see him go. 
Game 20, we're on hard difficulties. So no more messing around. Also, that last game cost me 400 monkey money, and I don't have that much. Speaking of messing around, the druid I purchased to start immediately leaked some balloons, as I didn't upgrade him at all. Well, I'm not messing around. I am experimenting with different strategies. Like here, I got a dartling gunner. It's not too powerful in its early stages, but the Hydra Rocket Pods upgrade is pretty good, and on round 37, I bought it. Although on round 40, we had a bit of a catastrophe, and I had to use two Super Monkey Storms. I'm not proud. After getting some banana farms, I realized I could afford a Prince of Darkness if I sold my Dartling Gunner, and while he wasn't that bad, I couldn't justify keeping him. And because I had just upgraded the Prince of Darkness, he didn't work quite as intended, and on round 60, I had to use another Super Monkey Storm. And on round 66, I decided to sell my Druid and buy a Mortar Monkey. If I can get 43k, I can get Blue Incineration, which is absurdly powerful for its price. And on round 74, I got it. It's not showing too well here, but if you get it at the right time, it can just casually pop 50,000 balloons in like three seconds. It's wild. Like, look at round 79. Look at this shit. Also, I don't know why I named it Bra. I probably did it like two years ago. And on game 21, I'm playing on primary only. Not too much happened in this game. I had a Moab press, boomerang monkey, and a Moab assassin bomb tower. Which let me beat round 40 easily. I don't really know why I got Azili. She didn't really level up high enough to have any use in 40 rounds. On game 22, I was playing on Deflation. My setup was Azili, three jungle druids, and a spike factory with spike mines. And of all of the game modes in BTD6, Deflation is definitely the hardest to commentate, as your loadout barely changes for the whole game. I ended up buying Azili up to level 10 to get Moab Hex, which beat this level on its own, basically. On game 23, I was playing military only, and as there's no water on the map, my loadout is going to be a little funky. By round 20, I had a Mortar, Sniper, and Azili. Also, because my sniper can one-shot lead balloons, it looks like nothing's happening on rounds 28 and 30. And on round 35, I lost a shit ton of lives, but with another sniper and a heli, I made it through round 40 alright, and on round 52, I had two full-auto snipers, a Moab Shove heli, and a main Moab sniper. And on round 60, with Azalea's ability, I destroyed the BFB before I could even see it. And on round 24, I'm back on Apocalypse, my favorite. I started with Azalea and a Dart Monkey, and that quickly proved to not be enough, and I ended up bleeding for quite a while in the early game. I placed a portable lake later on, and I managed to cram three subs and a Buccaneer in it. I Basically, this entire game was a struggle. I ended up using quite a few Super Monkey Storms, and having to very quickly place a Super Monkey to defend at the end of the track because I couldn't afford any more Super Monkey Storms. Although, with some upgrades, I did manage to beat round 60 quite easily, to my surprise. On game 25, I was on reverse, which is a nice break from the absolute chaos of Apocalypse. I started with Azili, and then got an Engineer Monkey, which is too good for its price, and then I got a Boomerang Monkey, who barely got to do anything because my Engineer had already popped the balloons by the time they got to the Boomerang Monkey. I ended up needing a crossbow monkey for round 32, as Azili is kind of not that great for popping individual balloons. And after getting Sharpshooter, my dart monkey is now about as powerful as the NG. And with that loadout, I got round 40 decently, and on round 48, I got a Dark Knight. Which, well good, is probably not worth the money. Anyway, I checked down the BFB on round 60 easily, and now I'm onto hard difficulties for this map. In game 26, I was doing alternate balloon rounds, which basically just means they're harder. And I haven't played this difficulty in a while, so forgive me if I'm terrible. On round 11, I bled a bunch of lives because I didn't have anything that could break lead, and I kept struggling for a while, but somehow I did manage to beat the reinforced Moab on round 40 without bleeding any lives. After that, I got a portable lake, and that helped a lot. I had two buccaneers and two subs in it, and I did get a necromancer, which helped a lot. And from round 40 to 60, things got easier and easier. And by round 60, I was quite overpowered, although 63 didn't end up getting a little bit close. I did end up needing to use a Super Monkey Storm on round 75, but directly after, I got a Prince of Darkness, which carried, and let me defeat the two Zoms on round 80. Game 27 was on Magic Only, which once again led to a very goofy, silly loadout. I just had a Zelia, a Druid, and a Wizard, and those carried me pretty much until round 40, although on round 40, I just barely defeated the Moab. But I didn't manage to survive. 
On round 42, I got two alchemists, one of which can convert balloons into gold, which makes them give more money when popped. And I basically rolled with that loadout until I defeated round 60, and then between 61 and 62, I got a Prince of Darkness. And then I got a Robo Super Monkey, which helped carry me into round 80 and defeat the Zom. Game 28 was on double HP Moab, so I'm going for high Moab damage. My setup for round 40 was a Moab Mauler, Moab Assassin, and a Wizard to pop camos. I did leak about 20 lives, but that setup didn't, did work against the Moab. Also, I got a Necromancer on round 43, which should help tremendously, and after losing some lives, I upgraded that Necromancer to a Prince of Darkness. And after that, I beat the BFB on round 60 quite easily, and I spent most of round 60 to 76 building and upgrading villages this time. And I easily beat round 76, and 78 was even easier. And then I swept up the Zom from round 80. In game 29, I was on half cash, so as usual, I was relying on free monkeys, including this full auto sniper, which did all of the heavy lifting in the first 50 rounds. And on round 52, I got my Necromancer. I also got a bank, which let me get Monkey Town on round 67. But on round 76, a bunch of balloons got passed. But they only did that because I was scrolled down in the powers menu for some reason, and I died. I was so pissed that I just bought a continue. For win streak purposes, this is a loss, but also I didn't want to waste all of those free monkeys. On game 30, I was on Impoppable, and basically doing the same thing as I've been doing for Impoppable and Chimps the entire video up until now. I did end up needing to place down a Dart Monkey to catch some stragglers from the end of round 40, but, uh, but I'm not doing too bad. I got my Prince of Darkness on round 62, and on round 63, I had to do a quick Super Monkey Storm because my POD didn't have time to spawn in balloons in time to fight the first wave of Serams on 63, and during the 70s, I was just increasing my income and village stuff and all that. I basically just kept at it until round 100, where I did decently against the BAD and won. On game 31, I was on chimps, but due to a series of minor mistakes, I didn't have enough money to get properly set up, and I lost on round 40. But on game 32, things were going a lot smoother, and I won round 40, just barely. But round 60 was much smoother, and on round 63, I didn't have enough money to get a Prince of Darkness, but I did have enough to get a Spike Factory with Spike Mines, and that came in clutch. But, unfortunately, it didn't do the same the same in round 76. I'm not sure how I can scrape up 28k in 13 rounds. Game 33 was almost the exact same, and the ninja I placed to catch a straggler earlier also caught more from the Moab, which was funny. They're pretty familiar with what happens now, and 63 did get quite close, but I did make it with some up upgrades to my ninja that is now just an actual part of my loadout. Round 76 went quite well. Basically every round until round 94 went the same. And on round 94, I meant to buy a Moab Shredder and instead bought a Carpet of Spikes. And well, 98 did get quite close. I defeated rounds 99 and 100 easily and black bordered this map. Game 34 was on the map Carved, just on medium difficulty, as I had only played this map on easy. I rolled with a Zealand and a Dart Monkey for a while, and on round 13, I got a Buccaneer. I would have put it on the left, but I already had my other towers on the right, and I want to hit everything with one village, so I'll just be going left in the future. I was doing quite well. I already had a Cannon Ship, level 5 Zealy, and a Crossbow Dart Monkey on round 24, and I was doing even better on round 40 when I scooped up the Moab. I had almost the exact same loadout until round 60, where I added a Moab Assassin because I wanted to use Azili's Moab Hex and Moab Assassin's ability to insta-kill a BFB, but I fumbled it. I still won, though. Game 35, we're on hard mode, and I've moved to the left now. I basically had the same loadout going into round 40, except I had a better position and Boomerang Monkey with the Kylie Boomerang upgrade. No surprise, I took out the Moab. Other than getting Moab Press for my Boomerang Monkey and getting a Village, my loadout was pretty much the same until round 55 when I got some Spiked Mines. I ended up getting a Necromancer before round 63, and to my surprise, I did very well against round 63. I got my Prince of Darkness on round 74, and here's a tip. If you're dealing with a round like 63 or 76 where you have a rush of balloons with very little time for your Necromancer to spawn, Set the zombified balloons to spawn as far back as possible, in case you have just a little sliver of the map that it can reach. It probably wasn't necessary here, but it could be a lifesaver if you're underpowered. And I beat round 80 very easily. 
Game 36 was on magic only, and I decided that I was going to do the harder difficulties and then the easier ones. I don't know why. I started with Azili, who I stuck with until round 8 when I got a Druid, who I kept upgrading until I got a Wizard that I turned into a Necromancer. That and the Ninja I got helped me to defeat round 40. My loadout did not get any less silly. By round 55, I had a Dark Knight, Blunjitsu, Rubber to Gold Alchemist, a Jungle Druid, Azili, and a Necromancer. This loadout works though, I crushed the BFB on round 60. I somehow thought this would leave me with enough lives to, sur to survive round 63. I don't know why I thought it would. Game 37, I decided to do alternate balloon rounds. I felt like I'd end up losing a lot if I kept trying to go on ma magic only. The strategy is basically the same, just that if you have to fo it's just that you focus on camo protection in the earlier rounds. And try to get ahead because the late rounds are really fucked. Round 40 went smooth, round 60 went smoother, and round 63 I survived, barely. I got my round, I, my Prince of Darkness on round 70, and I crushed round 78, which is allegedly one of the hardest rounds on ABR, and round 80 went pretty well too. Game 38, I'm back on Magic only, and I basically had the exact same loadout, except this time I plan to make more money and get a Prince of Darkness earlier. This game was basically the exact same as game 36 up until round 63, so I'll just skip there. I sold my Ninja Monkey to buy a Prince of Darkness, and that let me easily beat round 63. And I got a Tech Terror Super Monkey before round 76, which let me beat that too. And at this point, I think you can guess how round 78 and 80 went. Game 39, I'm on double HP Moab, so again, I'm going for high Moab damage. Although the only two towers I have with extra Moab damage are my Engineer and Moab Mauler. Although I did okay on round 40, I did end up leaving just enough lives to get past my Mana Shield. Although between rounds 40 and 55, I got Moab Press, Moab Assassin, and a Monkey Pirate, so I should be okay on round 60 and 80. I could have just harpooned my, the BFB with my Buccaneer, but I decided to try and fight it out, so I wouldn't have to worry about future BFBs. And I succeeded, although just before round 63, I realized I would need a Prince of Darkness, and I had to sell my Engineer, Buccaneer, and Village into a, in order to afford it. Although I really didn't need to sell the Engineer. I thought it would push to be able to afford the POD, and it did not. The Prince of Darkness helped, but I'll have to spend a few rounds worth of money to get my towers back to how they were before. And on round 70, my loadout was replenished, and I was ready for round 6 76, which I crushed. Same with 78, and before round 80, I sold my engineer and village to get a pirate lord, which let me beat round 80 with one click. Game 40 was on half cash, so as usual, I'm going to be mainly relying on free monkeys, and after a few rounds, I had bled some lives, but before round 12, I realized I'm supposed to be using free monkeys for this. After placing down some boys, I was rolling, just occasionally getting upgrades, and I literally missed round 40 and 60 because I was completely zoned out. And while I did need a cash drop and to actually aim my Dartling Gunner, I did beat round 63 too. And I beat round 76 and 78, but with an equal level of struggle. And I beat round 80 extremely quickly. Game 41, I'm on Impoppable, and I'm doing fairly well. I got a Necromancer before round 40, and I was, as I was about to get my Prince of Darkness, I got dicked over on round 63. I was furiously resisting clicking continue. Game 42, I'm still on Impoppable, and this time it went just as well in the early game. Although I'm thinking I'll try and get my Prince of Darkness much earlier. And by round 40, I had a Moab Press and a Necromancer. And a bit before round 60, I had a Prince of Darkness. And usually with a Prince of Darkness, everything up until around round 97 or so is pretty damn smooth. So you can probably guess how that went. And I beat the bad with three Super Monkey Storms. Game 43, I was going to play on Chimps, but I had to go. And if you quit and reload a save on Chimps, you get a gold border instead of a black border. Because there's this exploit where you can quit in the middle of a round if you're about to die. And it resets you back to the beginning of the round. Game 44, I was on Chimps again, and I was quite geared for round 40. I had a Moab Press, Crossbow Monkey, Necromancer, and a Zilli. I also got a Monkey Knowledge Point on round 45. And 10 rounds later, I got a Prince of Darkness. Now I can focus on the towers I don't need. After beating round 63, I decided to break away from my strategy for a second and get a Heli Pilot. Again, I broke from the strategy on round 77. This time I got a Mortar Monkey. And I got a Moab Eliminator on round 88. This should be a big help for round 100. It's funny to see the DDTs on round 95 not even be visible before my Prince of Darkness gets them. 
But of all rounds, 98 just so happened to be the one that got me. I was thinking my hel heli could hold off the Serams. I was wrong. On game 45, I decided to switch up the strategy on round 10 this time. Their ballistic missile upgrade does extra MOAV damage, and with advanced intel, it, uh, it can hit anywhere on the map that any other tower can reach. This game went quite well up until round 40, when I didn't get a Necromancer until it was too late. I did try placing a tower so that my sub could reach the last few balloons, but it was too little too late and I lost again. On game 46, I was basically doing the same thing, but I got my sub slightly later. By the early 30s, it had a ballistic missile and enough glue gunners to let it hit across all of the map. Round 40 to 60 were decent, 60 was great, and 63 was close. I was getting a bit scared that I wouldn't have enough firepower, but it wasn't long until I had a Prince of Darkness, and that put those fears to rest. I was basically cruising, and on round 85, I got a Moab Eliminator, again. On round 94, I really thought it was the end. But to my luck, the balloons from my Necromancer got the Serams going in right as they were about to get past. And on round 98, things got quite close, but I did make it. Same with 100. But once again, I did survive. On game 47, I'm playing military only. I almost forgot I hadn't done the easier difficulties yet and thought I blackboarded. It's nice to not worry about one balloon getting past and instantly ending your run. I started with a Zilli, then a Sub, then a Dartling Gunner, then a Heli, but unfortunately most military monkeys technically have very small ranges, so my advanced intel didn't mean much. I had quite a powerful loadout by the end of the game. It being medium difficulty makes it much quicker and I'm already done. In game 48, I forgot to record, but I was on Apocalypse in 1. I didn't notice this until I finished the game. In game 49, I'm on Reverse, and this map is actually slightly different on Reverse, but it's still basically the same. I went with a Glue Gunner this game. That, my Sub, Azili, and a completely unupgraded Dart Monkey were my only towers up until round 37, when I got a Boomerang Monkey for the incoming round 40. I did also get a Buccaneer on round 39 as part of my plan for round 60, and I took the mob quite easily. And that Buccaneer plan was already ready on round 44, a bit sooner than expected. I, I also bled some lives, and to try not to die, I did have to upgrade my Dart Monkey, although it would be funny to carry an unupgraded Dart Monkey from round 1 to the end of the game. Also, apparently Necromancers send the balloons in the wrong direction in reverse. I had the opportunity to execute my Buccaneer plan, but I decided to go with a different one involving a monkey sub. It still worked equally well. Game 51 was on deflation, so I just went with my typical strategy of Azili, a dark net with plasma beams, and a spike factory with balls. Deflation sucks to commentate. Do you want to just watch me pop balloons with no changes to the loadout? Yes? Well, here it is. I also got a monkey knowledge perk that gives me an extra 200 starting cash, which could actually be huge. Game 52, I'm on Spring Spring, which is an intermediate map, which means I'm making absolute bang. I'm going to try and get a bunch of subs with ballistic missiles. I really want this strategy to be viable. I had a I had full map coverage on round 37 and 40. I got to test the strat and it could work, although I don't have much camo coverage, so I'll need to work on that. I also got a glue gunner with relentless glue on round 52. This is a key part of my strategy. And when the BFB came on round 60, it was incredibly easy with Moab Hex, Moab Glue, and a shit ton of missiles. Game 53, I'm on the same map. I'm going for another black border, but this time I plan on, g on doing free play. I'm going for subs again, but this time I'm using a slightly different strategy. Instead of placing glue gunners everywhere to give a cluster of subs full range, the subs will be providing the range themselves. Also, I'm doing some on the bottom path, too. I basically just got more boys and upgraded them until round 40 when I beat the Moab and went into free play. After round 40, I placed some banana farms. I'm thinking I'll be on this one for a while, so I should try and get as much money as I can. And by round 56, all of my subs had either armor-piercing darts or ballistic missiles. I was not worried at all about round 60. I crushed it with ease, and after round 63, which I also beat, I decided to place some ninjas along the track so that I could pop camos when they come along. 
And I finished upgrading them on round 69. I am so powerful. And after round 70, I started placing Buccaneers. They can generate a lot of money if properly upgraded. And by round 75, I started upgrading them. And as expected, I barely had to pay attention to round 80. I was basically just upgrading the whole time. On round 83, all of my Buccaneers were now Merchantmen, and I was making 6k at the end of each round. With favored trades, that will be even more. But, but on round 90, right before I got to finish my favored trades upgrades, I overestimated how equipped I was for DDTs and ended up losing to them. I could have continued just to finish my business, but would it would have cost me 500 monkey money. So it wasn't exactly worth it. Game 54, I'm on primary only, and while I did leak some balloons at the start, by round 15, it was pretty much smooth sailing. My plan is to get Moab Press for my Boomerang Monkey and Moab Glue for my Gunky Guy, and then let them take on the Moab. If it all goes according to plan, I should have this win. I'll also get a Sharpshooter to deal with the Cerams. I got the first item on my shopping list around 27, the second on 32, and the third on 35. And, well, it wasn't exactly the plan, I did beat the Moab on round 40. Game 55, I'm on deflation, and you already know what happened, just... Oh well. Game 56, I'm doing it again! This time I have a Pirate Buccaneer, a Wizard, a Zealy, a Druid, and a Mortar. Although I did get a Spike Factor at one point because I had excess money and I needed all of the camo protection I could get. But it wasn't enough. I don't know how I'm struggling on, on deflation of all game modes. Game 57, I'm on deflation yet again. And this time I'm using a Pirate Lord, two planes, and I ended up getting a Spike Factory later because I had the money and I felt like it. I wasn't very confident that the strategy would work, but it did. Game 58, I'm on military only, and I'm doing the substrat. This time, I was using Azili and two Buccaneers for all of my camo detections. So at a few points, I leaked some camos, but it ended up being alright. And I basically spent all of my time and money upgrading my subs. And right as I got the last ballistic missile upgrade, the BFB came and I popped it easily. Game 59, I'm on Apocalypse, my favorite. And I was doing a new strat because this map sucks. I want to try and get a Grandmaster Ninja and surround it with 20 Shinobis, who boost its power. This on top of a village being a very powerful com uh, combo. I ended up having 4 Shinobis by around 42, but I lost. I decided to use a continue though as I was mainly using this as a round to see how long it would take to get full Shinobi and a Grandmaster. And then I died anyway. Well, that doesn't appear to work. Game 61, I'm on the cracked map. After doing some testing in Sandbox, I learned that Apocalypse is incredibly hard on that map in particular. Unfortunately, this map doesn't have water, so Substrat isn't really viable here. Also, I'm on easy because I had already done medium and hard. I basically just did the same strategy I had done for all the maps before Spring Spring. And by round 35, I had all of my regular guys. I also learned that the rock in the middle can be destroyed and reveals a little bit of water, although it's not really enough for substrat. Regardless, I beat the Moab. I'd be really surprised if I didn't at this point. Game 62, I'm on military only. I'm going for Apocalypse as soon as possible because I'm petty. Although military only is especially hard on this map as there's no water unless you pay money. So I was basically just rolling with Azili and a sniper for a while. And by a while, I mean 12 rounds. I got a plane on round 12. I kept upgrading my boy until I realized I did not have great camo coverage, so I got a sub and a second sniper. I also got special targeting for, pl for my plane, which makes it a monster. I also got a Buccaneer. I plan to use it on round 60, but it was ready on round 48. I also got main Moab, which stuns them, and then I got full auto rifle, which is insane. In round 60, I just decided to take the BFB the old-fashioned way, and it worked wonders. On game 63, I'm on Impoppable. I swear to god it was the map. I started with the strategy that failed on the last map and it worked just fine, what do you know? I actually did end up losing a few lives at a few points, but so one path makes things a lot easier. I ended up going with a Necromancer, Sharpshooter, and Moab Press, plus a Zealy, and later on, a Buccaneer. I made it around 60 decently and actually made it 10 rounds before I died again. 
Game 64 was on reverse, and I'd say this map is slightly easier on reverse. I'm basically doing the same shit as last time. I got a Zeely, a Dart Monkey, and a Boomerang Monkey in the first few rounds. And then I got a Moab Press on round 24, Sharpshooter on round 33, and Necromancer on round 38. Then a Fat W on round 40, a Prince of Darkness, and another Fat W on round 60. Game 65, I'm doing primary only. I'm just using a Zeely, a Dart Monkey, and a Boomerang Monkey. I basically did my thing. I just upgraded my towers until round 40. And I also got a Moab Assassin later on. I'm not going to waste your time too much because I've done this like four times now. I beat it, obviously. Game 66, I'm doing Deflation. I went with a Spike Factory with Balls, a Jungle Druid, a Dark Knight, and a Zeely. What's even the point in commentating a deflation game? I beat all the rounds, including round 60, and then I left the game. Game 67, I was on alternate balloon rounds and not recording until round 45. The only detail from the previous round of any note was that on round 40, I just barely survived, and in preparation for round 50, I got two helis, one mo with Moab Shove and one with Razor Rotors. And in the mid-50s, I got two banks, and in round 63, I won with just a little assistance from a Super Monkey Storm. And I got a Prince of Darkness on round 71, and a Crossbow Master on round 75. I beat the substantially overhyped round 78, and I hardly saw any balloons on round 80. Game 68 was on Impoppable, and until about round 40, I was in constant fear of one balloon getting past me. And on round 40, I beat them all up, and at that point, I was feeling pretty secure. And I almost kept the exact same loadout, except a village, uh, until right at the end of round 62, I got a Necromancer to deal with round 63. And I also got two subs on round 69. Huh. Round 80 was quite easy, and by this point, I'm pretty set. On round 87, I got my sub the Preemptive Strike upgrade, and look at that pop count, oh my gourd. I also got a Crossbow Master on round 96, you can never be too sure. Turns out I was not sure enough, and some balloons got past me on round 98. I swear to god. On game 69, nice. Game 70, I'm on chimps. I'm basically doing the same thing as I've been doing for most of the video. And just as I was about to beat round 40, the ice monkey I placed to clutch didn't refreeze for some reason, and I lost. Game 71 was the exact same until I got to round 40 and did much better. I also got a spike factory that I didn't end up using until much later in the game. And on round 55, I got my Necromancer. And on round 58, I got a Heli. And I planned to get him to be an Apache Prime. And I got an Apache Dart Ship on round 74. And I got the Apache Prime upgrade on round 89. I beat round 100 with just a little bit of hardship, but it was a victory nonetheless. Game 72, I was on Magic only, and I did end up losing some lives in the early game, and I kept a Bloonjitsu Ninja, a Zeely, and a Necromancer until I got my Prince of Darkness on round 54. And after crushing round 60, I got a Dark Knight, which should help me not die for like three rounds at least. And after those, I got a Wizard Phoenix Lord and a Jungle Druid, and those let me be at round 80. Game 73 was on double HP Moabs, and unrelated to Moabs, I was immediately losing health. I got two bomb shooters later, and those will become Moab Maulers and later Moab Assassins. I also placed a Dart Monkey later, because I realized Azili was my only camo protection, and before she's leveled up, she's not a very powerful tower. I also got a Wizard later, intending to upgrade it to Necromancer before round 40, but I had auto start on and didn't realize it was round 40 until it was too late. I just used a Super Monkey Storm to mop that up. I made it through round 60 okay, but I couldn't afford a Prince of Darkness by round 63, so instead I went with three jungle druids and they did the trick. And later on I got my Prince of Darkness anyway, and they handled it. And while round 80 didn't go quite as planned, I made it through okay. Game 74 was on half cash, so I'm using an extremely thrown together group of free monkeys, and one of those, my spike factory, only had 11 puffs until it saved me from annihilation on round 40. I also got razor rotors on round 45, and once again that spike factory saved my ass on round 61. And my other spike factory saved my ass on round 63. And again on round 76, although 78 gives you a bit more time, so despite having more ceram, 78 was actually a smidge easier. And round 80, I succeeded yet again, and Blackboardered cracked. Game 75, I'm on the Spice Islands map, and I can substrat again. 
I rolled into the first 40 rounds, barely even seeing the balloons as they came by. And rounds 40 to 50 were a bit tougher, but by round 50, I had my subs pretty much done. And on round 60, I decided to go on free play just to see how far the strategy could carry me. And it got through 63 quite well, and then I decided to line my screen with upgraded subs, because why the fuck not? Also, I lost some lives in round 78 because of the camos, so I decided to place some ninjas so my subs could pop camo throughout the whole map. Although, unfortunately, I was as I was lining the map, some balloons ended up getting passed and I took an L. This is so sad. Game 76, I'm on hard and, uh, and not doing substrat anymore. And I ended up losing some lives in the early game, but nothing that got past my mana shield. And after that, I got a wall of fire, which helped, but still isn't perfect, and some balloons still got passed. And on round 32, I got a Necromancer, which was perfect, so no worrying about that. Later on, I got a Prince of Darkness, and on round 71, I got a Crossbow Master. And other than those, after round 40, my loadout was the exact same, and that loadout popped the Zom. Game 77, I'm on alternate balloon rounds and using the exact same loadout, so it's pretty much the same thing, just slightly harder. On round 40, it was a bit close, and I ended up needing to use a Super Monkey Storm. Also, I used another on round 54, but on round 55, I got my Prince of Darkness, so I should be pretty secure from here on out. As expected, I dealt with round 60, and on round 68, I got a Crossbow Master. And this game, round 78, actually did come almost within reach of me not destroying it, but I beat it nonetheless. Same with round 80. Game 78 was on Impoppable, and the same strategy yet again. But I did round 40 better, because it is literally easier. I basically had the same loadout plus a sharpshooter until I got a heli, and then I made him a Apache dart ship, which let me beat round 63, and I rolled with that loadout until round 75 when I got my Prince of Darkness. Later than I normally would, but I beat round 80 right after, and I got an Apache Prime on round 91. On round 99, I got a Crossbow Master, and on round 100, I won. Game 79 was on chimps, and once again, I'm doing the same strategy, but for whatever reason, it didn't work against the Moab. Huh. Game 80, I'm basically doing the same strat, believe it or not, but this time I got a Moab press earlier, and that worked wonders against round 40. And after getting my armor-piercing darts, and then on round 59, a Prince of Darkness, and then on round 74, I got a Crossbow Master, and not long after that... I got a heli, but by round 80, I realized I didn't place down a Zeely, so I might not be able to get my Moab Hex by round 100. And just after that, I got an Apache Dart Ship. And as it turned out, by round 96, I had my Moab Hex, and on round 97, somehow these two reinforced Zoms got past me. I paused the game to see if I could salvage it, but I realized there was no way I could work my way out of it. Game 81, I'm doing the same strategy yet again, but this time I'm going to try and spend my money smarter in the late game and get Azili earlier. And it basically went the exact same up until around 76, and it was very close, but 78 and, so and 80 were much easier. And I got Moab Domination on round 84, and the last three rounds were extremely close, and the only reason I made it past the bad was because I placed an impromptu Apache Dart Ship. Game 82, I was on magic only and bleeding out for most of the first 40 rounds, and my round 40 setup was two wizards, one of which being a necromancer, a druid, and a zealy. And after getting my prince of darkness, I got a phoenix for my other wizard, and later on, I also got a dark knight. And after that, I put down some random towers just for extra firepower in case I needed it, and defeated round 80 quite easily. Game 83 was on double HP Moabs, and I'm basically using the same strategy as the last time I played on double HP Moabs. And on round 40, I just barely survived with 31 lives left. And not much happened other than upgrading my bomb shooters until round 81 when I got my Prince of Darkness. And I also got a Moab Eliminator on round 77. And check out how efficiently I dealt with the Zom. Game 84 was on reverse. I want to get more free monkeys before I do half cash again. This time, I was going to be mostly relying on a pirate buccaneer, at least for the waves with Moabs. And on the first wave with a Moab, I forgot to use its harpoon and beat the Moab anyway. And it only got easier after that first one. I also got a pirate lord on round 54, so that helped me more. Although on round 56, I needed to use a super monkey storm to clear some camo balloons that got past me. 
So I deforested an island and built a village on it to give camo detection to my ship. I decided to not use my ability on run 60. I was doing it the old-fashioned way and you know it worked, because I've literally done it before. Game 85 was on military only, and my setup was a Zeely, a submarine, a buccaneer with camo detection so my sub could pop camo, and a pirate buccaneer. And by round 46, I had gotten the camo buccaneer to be a pirate, and I didn't even intend him to be a pirate. Although pirates do get ge extra general firepower, and the camo ramps on round 52 might just have made it past a sub and an underpowered buccaneer. And on round 58, I got a pirate lord that I don't need. My other pirate got the BFB anyway. On game 86, I'm on primary only, and I started with a bomb shooter. I normally wouldn't, but it's hard to go wrong with your starter tower on easy. That bomb shooter and two dart monkeys would be my only towers this game. I got a sharpshooter for camos, and a juggernaut for the serams left by the Moab. Game 87 is on deflation, and I think I've done this enough. You get the drill right, I placed a dark knight, and the spike factory, and one... Yeah, alright, that's good. Game 88, I'm back on half cash, and I didn't get a single free monkey after doing chimps anyway. One of my free towers, a spike factory, got replaced as soon as I realized it was going for a path that I didn't exactly want, so I just wasted that free tower. I mostly just made small upgrades to my roster for quite a while, the biggest individual one being a Moab Assassin bomb shooter, and run 63 when... Well, I had to use three Super Monkey Storms, but I don't want to talk about it. And then I had to use another on round 76, but 78, my Spike Factory had a little time to prep, and I did manage to survive round 78 without using a Super Monkey Storm. And by contrast, round 80 was incredibly easy. Game 90, I don't have time to blackboard or another map, so I'm just gonna mess around for the next 10 games. This game, I'm playing default hard mode on Monkey Meadow, a map I've already blackboarded. And I just decided to go for some classic towers, a bomb shooter, tax shooter, boomerang, and a dart monkey. I decided to get some towers that I hadn't really fucked with much in this video. I got a top path bomb shooter and two boomerang monkeys. One upgraded top middle, which I never really did in this video. I also got an ace later on, and I didn't use them much either. I also got a necromancer, which I did use too much throughout the video. I ended up leading some lives and because of camo rainbows in round 42. Although, when more serams came on round 51, I was fine because I got sharpshooter. And to my great surprise, I got through round 63 perfectly fine, which and I ended up getting some banana farms that I sold to get attack zone on game 75. Which gave me an easy win on 76 and 78, and with my collective might, I managed to beat round 80. Game 91 was on Park Path, a map I've already blackboarded, and I want to see how long I can last in this game. My current highest round of all time, not just this video, is 238. My highest of this video is 140. I started with a crossbow monkey, and just after, I got a boomerang monkey, and then a zealy, and then a spike factory, and then I started going for income. I got five banana farms before round 40, and I fought and won against the Moab. And then I got a perma spike factory in round 59, and round 63 was quite easy. And then I blacked out and had ultra mines and $100,000 of debt. Oh, by the way, those towers I started with stayed the exact same up until round 87 with my crossbow. And on round 89, I got Moab Domination. So this game started to get a little bit whatever the fuck this is. And I believe if I recapped the rest of it, this one game would be longer than the entire rest of the video. I reached round 250, and at that point, I chose to sell all of my towers, and from them I made nearly $2.5 million and died rich. Game 92, I decided to do an Odyssey. It's basically a series of games where you can only bring a certain set of monkeys with a certain set of upgrades, and you have to beat three games using them. The first game only went to round 50, and it was on the map middle of the road. It was quite easy. My loadout was not far from normal, and I won. It wasn't hard. Game 93 was on skates, and I was using two buccaneers and a boomerang monkey for the start of the game, and late on, I got a spike factory and dartling gunner, and even later on, I upgraded my Dartling Gunner to Bloon Area Denial System. And I'm thinking about using it a bit more. At least I would be if I had more than seven games left. 
Although, before being able to test its next level, I beat round 55, which was the last one. Game 94, I was on four circles, and deflation, which means that it's boring. I used spiked mines, an underpowered dartling gunner, and an ultra juggernaut dart monkey. And that loadout was fine. I finished the Odyssey. Game 95 was on the map Cargo. It's an advanced map, but I have a plan for it, don't worry. And I'm only on easy, so I'll be using a Buccaneer to make round 40 as easy as possible. And I did end up getting a Buccaneer, but on round 40, my other monkeys popped the Moab before I could hook it. And I ended up letting a whole ass ceramic balloon past. I still won, though. <laughs> Game 97 was on Underground Apocalypse and with a friend, the same friend who was in the Battles video. By level 20, we had a Glue Gunner, Dart Monkey, and a Boomerang Monkey, a Monkey Ace, Azili, and Etienne. And we stuck upgrading them until just before round 40, when I got a Heli Pilot, and then I spent $800, and then I got an Apache Dart Ship, which carried us to round 60, and we died on round 71. Game 98 was on End of the Road on Impoppable, and we started with a Boomerang Monkey and a Dart Monkey, and then a Transgender Icon, and by round 30 we had a Buccaneer, Etienne, Boomerang Monkey, Azili, a Glue Gunner, and a Dart Monkey, and after some upgrades and dealing with the Moab on round 47, they disconnected. And we were reunited on round 61. Between then, I got some upgrades for my Glue Gunner and Necromancer for my Wizard. And I defeated the BFB, and with the pocket money that we scraped together, we got an Ultra Juggernaut just before round 63, and it got us through. Same with 76, 78, and 80. And with my Prince of Darkness, rounds 90 to 98 were swept. 98 we swept, but they disconnected, so I had to wait until they got back to play round 100. On round 100, we lost, uh, but I didn't want to give up, so I just used a continue, which I normally wouldn't. And we did some restructuring and got Moab Domination, and that w did the trick. Game 99, we were on In The Loop, also the first map I played in this video. We started with Azili, a Glue Gunner, and a Dart Monkey, and after a bit we expanded to also have a Boomerang Monkey, and after nearly dying on round 40, we got a Wizard on round 48, and we beat round 60 with room to spare. And on round 63, I learned that Ice Monkeys are quite good on rounds like 63 and 76. Speaking of 76, we beat it, and then round 80, and then we went into free play and died on round 103. Game 100, uh, uh, uh wh where am I? All right, I'm in Bloons TD1. This is the first Bloons Tower Defense game. Not to be confused with the first Bloons game, because those are very different, and there are several entire video essays on it. It's quite stripped back. There are only five towers, you have 40 lives, and of those 40 lives, I had lost 13 by round 7. I'm planning to do a video where I play each BTD game and 100 total games. That I do a series where I play 100 games of each BTD game. And I died on round 10. What a fittingly underwhelming game 100. See you later.